And here we have the attacks going now all the time. This looks like Rudy Petri who's going forward. Lots of action. Raul Alcala in second place in that King of the Mountains jersey. But although Paul rightly said it is flat today, it wasn't right out at the very beginning this morning. We went over a second category climb and a third and a fourth category climb through the beautiful Tarn Gorges. And the ride is now almost at sea level. But this morning, Luis Herrera was in action trying to snatch up the points. And I think uh, we'll find that Herrera has taken back the overall lead in the King of the Mountain section. Apart from that, so far today, there's been no significant change at all in the leaderboard. The yellow jersey of Charlie Motte is there. And Malcolm Elliott, who's promising this morning a stage win for the ANC Halfords team, he too was on the attack. The attack he made after 20 kilometres was neutralised by the bunch. Uh, but since then, he's been at or near the front of this long line. As you can see at the moment, we're now being treated to the constant attacking over this last 18 to 20 mile as riders try to break clear. So Alcala on the front of this one. And Alcala's lost another teammate from the 7-11 team today because Davis Finney has gone. This Adrian Timmis in second place at the moment, riding on Alcala's wheel. Significant point, uh, possibly, Paul, that he's looking to try and play the perfect teammate for Malcolm Elliott today. Well, it looks like uh, the, the best chance for these English boys is to try and slip into a break like this today. And obviously, Adrian would like to, uh, Adrian would like to prove himself and try and uh, get his name seen as he's joined here, actually, by Alan Piper, who's uh, obviously trying to uh, make a name for himself because a lot of these riders, apart from Alcala, who's in this break at the moment, won't, uh, won't have much chance of winning until next Friday because it's going to be very, very mountainous for the next week or so. And it's interesting to see that Alcala is there. So I think this, this break will actually be a doomed break because they won't give him too much lead now because he's making a very big name for himself. Yes, that's absolutely right. Of course, Alcala is lying sixth overall at the moment. He's not going to get an inch on the, on the leaders on this running today. The sun is back to its hottest down here at Avignon. And uh, it is well into the mid-80s today. It certainly wasn't at the start because we were in dense fog at one stage of the day. We were as high as the clouds. But now we're out on to the coast road. Good breakaway this. Tim is working in it. And I'm a little bit surprised to see Adrian on the attack. It's very good to see him on the attack, I must say that, because this morning he was saying he was beginning to feel a bit tired. Well, perhaps the sun has revitalized him. He's third in line here at the moment. Uh, this is Raul Alcala, the only Mexican who has been an absolute sensation in this year's Tour de France. He's worn the white jersey as best newcomer. He's uh, finished second on the stage. He's also now leading at the moment the King of the Mountains. And he's lying sixth overall. Second Tour de France for him. And we've got Alan Piper too and somebody else bridging the gap there. And it looks like it's Yellow Nydam. It seems a long time to go to talk about the day this man won the prologue time trial on July the 1st in West Berlin. But that is Nydam who's come onto the back of the four front runners. This is a very good break, Paul, with Nydam. It is a very good break because it will stop the uh, Super Confex team from chasing. However, uh, I think all the other teams with the, the team leaders, the lads who are going to actually uh, play for the win in this Tour de France, won't let this break get very far because uh, with Raul Alcala in there, he's been putting in some performances in the mountains recently, well above his, uh, well above his years, well above his experience. So uh, I don't think they'll let him slip because one or two riders now are already saying that Alcala might be an outsider to win this Tour de France. Yes, uh, that might be the only reason this break is going to have to really work hard to open up even a few seconds today. It's the most difficult thing to do. Let's see what they're doing. And it's a good gap so far, but look what they've done to the bunch. They've fragmented the bunch in pursuit here because they're all out to bring back Raul Alcala. What a shame for Adrian Timmis. Incidentally, you see the initial letters CGT on the road occasionally. People think that uh, they are people are sign writing the road in support of one of the riders, but in fact it is the initials of the Communist Trade Union here in France who managed to trace the route every day. So there we are as we go through yet another of the small villages. And we've got about five or six riders, still five riders in this breakaway. Number 123 at the back is Jean-René Bernardeau, who lives down in the south of France, and he is so dark-skinned from the sun, he really is well sunburned. We're going down, of course, towards the Camargue at the moment. As all nature lovers know, that's where the flamingos fly wild and free, and so do some of France's most rarest of birds. And the group now beginning to swell a little bit. Three, six, seven riders there now. And we think one of the riders who've just come onto the back is another ANC Halford rider. Now, we'd like to get down there on our motorbike and check it out. But Paul Sherwin feels that Malcolm Elliott has bridged the gap to the back. 
and as Sherwin rarely makes mistakes, as you well know, Richard, it wouldn't surprise me when we get downstairs on our camera that we don't see Malcolm Elliott in this leading breakaway. What a superb move that would have been if Elliott has jumped across the gap. He really is uh, looking for the win today, and, uh, well, there's a sadness for us all. The group has come across working very hard. I'm afraid we've got to blame the presence of Raoul Alcala in this group. And we now have about 12 or 15 riders trying to glow clear. Uh, but for the moment, two riders in the front, Malcolm Elliott and Adrian Timmis. Be right back with us to see the closing stages of today's Tour de France. Welcome back to the route of the Tour de France. And still the attacks are coming fast and furious now from this main field in these closing kilometres. We've got in this front group Phil Anderson from Australia and Malcolm Elliott too has joined the leaders again. So he really is searching for that elusive stage victory and that would be a marvellous result for Great Britain and we're hoping that this break will go away. The gap is opening now all the time. We've in fact seen a series of attacks even from the yellow jersey Charlie Motte and from Lonham Fignon and from Jean-Francois Bernard but Stephen Roach was watching them all the time. So these four riders now are the latest in the way of attacks. There's Malcolm Elliott riding second in line. Anderson looks over his shoulder and says come on through give me a hand. 181 in that red-orange jersey is Mark Sargent, the winner of the stage in Stuttgart. And at the back of this group, we've got number 47, Jose Navarro. So these, Paul, are four very good rides. It would be one terrific sprint finish, wouldn't it? Well, this, is, this would be an incredible sprint finish if it was to stay away, but the bunch is absolutely charging all over the place. They're attacking every time the road turns left, turns right. Uh, this is obviously the last day for a lot of these riders for nearly a week because they're going to be in the mountains for another four or five days and everybody here wants to get away, everybody wants to win this stage. And this is an ideal kind of situation for Malcolm Elliott to slip into, and he's been in one or two of these moves already today. It just goes to show that in his mind he's thinking about one thing, and that's winning a stage before we get into the mountains. Well, it's a wonderful finish here in Avignon, and none of the narrow roads, sharp descents and little roundabouts. We have a long run in all the way to the line. It is a typical finish that Malcolm Elliott could win given the right conditions. We're still six miles from the finishing line. As you can see, the whole field now are trying to claw back these four men who are taking their chance. Navarro on the front, all four willing to work here. Anderson now having to come out of Navarro's slipstream and take Malcolm Elliott through to do his turn of pacemaking. At the back, Mark Sargent, the former Belgian champion who has won one stage of the Tour de France already. And you can see how four men here, representing four different teams, are combining now to beat the common enemy at the moment, the whole of the Tour de France behind. All except two riders today, by the way. We've lost two more riders on today's stage of the Tour de France. Uh, Davis Finney, the American stage winner last Sunday, he's gone out now. So too is one of the Colombians, Camarco, who was last uh, yesterday on the stage and it was ill. Finney too was ill. So we're now down to just 164 riders in the Tour as we head out towards Mont Ventoux on Sunday, the day after tomorrow's rest day. Look at the gap beginning to open now, and I don't mind admitting Paul Sherwin and I are hoping that this breakaway will go clear, because if I was a betting man, I would bet any amount of money that Malcolm Elliott would win the sprint if he comes to the finishing line with these four riders. Well, if Malcolm can get to the finish with these four riders and he can smell, smell that, uh, that banner with his Arrivé written across the top, I don't think any of these riders can challenge him because although Phil Anderson's very strong, Malcolm is a pure sprinter. He's got the sprint to put uh, half of the finishing straight into these riders if he gets the smell of a victory, especially in the Tour de France stage. Well, there they are. Elliot wears 2-2-1. He's the leader of the ANC Halford team. Of course, he won the British Milk Race this year so well. He led it from start to finish. But he's the first to admit that the British Milk Race is a long way from the 2,500 miles of the Tour de France. The last time a British rider, no, I'll correct that, the last time an English rider won the Tour de France was Barry Hoban back in 1975. We've had Robert Miller pop up with stages in the mountains in 1983 and 1984, but wouldn't it be fitting the day before we go to the area around Mont Ventoux for Sunday's stage where Tommy Simpson, a Yorkshireman like Elliot, sadly died in this Tour de France exactly 20 years ago. Wouldn't it be fitting at the gateway to Provence that an Englishman and indeed a Yorkshireman in Malcolm Elliott was to win the stage after such a long gap. I know that Tommy Simpson would be the first to congratulate him because he was so pro-English uh, in the Tour de France. There we are, Elliott now 
Phil Anderson. And really, with Anderson in the brakes, you can't find a better willing workhorse than Anderson. Well, Phil will fight all the way to the finish line. He's the kind of rider who never gives up. He's tried very, very hard himself up to now to try and win a stage here. And Mark Sargent is also that kind of rider because uh, we saw him re winning the stage into uh, Strasbourg, which seems like another race. It seems so long ago. But he's the kind of rider, but it looks to me, Phil, as if this break is going to be doomed because they've only got about 150, 200 metres lead here. And it's very, very unfortunate because these roads were so long and so straight that these four riders are like a carrot in front of the peloton. But Malcolm can still uh, bring something out of the flames here because uh, there's not very far to go. And he's at the front. He'll be caught. And if he can l latch onto the, uh, to the front runners, he'll stay in a very good position for the sprint here. Well, now it's going to have to be a strength of personality for Malcolm. You can see the field sweeping by those four boys who took the chance. It was well worth a try. But as Paul says, it is a long, long straight road to the finish today. And it swings on to the side of the river banks for the finishing sprint. And again, the attacks are going. This time it's the Caja Rodal team and it's Pascal Jules who goes out in front. It looks to me there, Phil, as if uh, Stephen Roach is playing the ideal teammate because... Uh, it looks to me as if Stephen Roach has come to the front here to lead out Bontempi. And in fact, Bontempi thanked Stephen Roach uh, through the press the, due to his last, uh, his last uh, stage victory in Troyes because he said uh, there's no trouble in our team because Stephen Roach, as they go under the uh, red kite, Stephen Roach is here leading out Guido Bontempi, his, uh, his teammate, who uh, must stand a very, very good chance of winning the sprint here. Well, you can see all the white jerseys of Carrera there. Stephen Roach uh, not worried about his third place overall in the Tour de France now because that's safe for another day. In fact, when this uh, bunch comes over the line, there'll be no change in the overall classification. So it's all down to the sprinters. And one of the fastest of them all, of course, is Guido Bontempi. And for my money, too, Malcolm Elliott. Now, can Elliott, Van Poppel and Bontempi, they're the likely three that will battle out this finish unless Elliott did just too much as they came in towards the finish earlier. Now let's look at the line here as, uh, as Stephen Roach, uh, no, it's not Roach now, but it's still the Carrera team who tried to bring this sprint up to the line with Bontempi tucked in nicely on the wheel. This is a very, very good sprint finish. The green jersey there is uh, Jean-Paul Van Poppel and Bontempi is going from the front. Bontempi's making a long run now as he's on the right of the picture. Watch Bontempi as he comes to the line and John Paul, Paul Van Poppel in green comes through on the inside. This is a marvellous spin finish, Bontempi. Oh, my God, I couldn't fit them on the line. Absolutely impossible. We think Van Poppel took him by the skin of his racing tyre away there from Guido Bontempi. And in third place was the uh, uh, um, uh, Rodriguez of, of the BH team, the Spanish sprinter, who came in in third place. Uh, Dominguez, probably it was, number 45, the Spanish sprinter. In third place, I didn't catch sight of Malcolm Elliott at the end of the day. Maybe he was there, but what a close finish. There's never been, to my knowledge, a dead heat in a stage of the Tour de France, but you won't come any closer to that. Let's look at it again in slow motion here. As we see Guido Bontempi on the right make his dive for the line as Girotto slid off the front, leading him out perfectly. Then came the man who's going to become the fastest man in the world. He's only 24 at the moment, uh, Jean-Paul Van Poppel. Both of these men going for their second stage win of the Tour de France. As they come on the line, watch the wheels as they hit the line. Oh, well, what do you say about that? Are we going to see our first ever uh, equal first placing in the Tour de France? Let's have a look at it again here, because as you can see, nobody can spit them on the line. Well, I can't spit them, and I don't think, Paul, you can either. So the two of them over the line... Van Poppel, and as we look through the riders there, I must say, I don't see Malcolm Elliott. He obviously proved a little bit too much for him. He made an excellent move. There's no question about it. That was the way to try and win the stage. It didn't work out, and we've been treated to the most amazing sprint finish this Tour de France has seen. And there is an enormous cheer gone up here across the river at Avignon because there is a Dutch audience here today, and the judges have just awarded the stage to Jean-Paul Van Poppel of the Super Confex team and that is his second stage win of the Tour de France and it won't ever be closer than that again I'm sure. There is the confirmation Jean Van Poppel is the winner, not surprisingly in the same time, Guido Bontempi, Dominguez of Spain is there, Malcolm Elliott just crept in there in sixth position.